Our problem with our compressor is that the contacts are corroded. So there are the reason that we had to jerry rig everything and had to put like um, what's it called heat wrap on it or shrink wrap on it is because the contacts they're called spade contacts are corroded and they're not in the right shape to be able to uh, clamp onto which you might see if you check out the previous video this is a quick lug um, terminal repair kit that uses this sort of screw clamp to attach those wires all right so of course first thing we want to do is you want to wire brush it and then i can show you how uh, to install it uh, of course you want to make sure that you have all the safety precautions uh, down make sure you take out the breaker and make sure you short the capacitor which we've already done make sure that we can get rid of all of the debris on the connectors so that's clean for install and so by the way these these connectors they're called the uh, um spade connectors and i think the reason why now i'm not 100 percent sure on this but my guess is because they kind of look like shovels or spades like they have the pull and then the flat um uh, side is uh kind of looks like the, the metal part take out the quick lug and let's see what we're dealing with okay and while i'm taking this out another thing is that my dad was saying that because i'm also learning while i'm doing this is that because this is a three ton compressor and you know it's a bit of a heavier load it definitely is more recommended to go for a thicker gauge like 10 gauge than these thinner 12 gauge ones and so that's another consideration that you want to make when you're choosing wires like these the first thing i want to do is just test how does this fit so let's put all three of them on without connecting the wires and you can see all of them fit without interference it's a bit of a tight fit but it goes for that kind of honeycomb shape so what i'm going to do is let's take a look at these wires and also you have uh allen key ones allen key screws that you can use instead of these phillip heads if you want to you can see that on our wires we have one end that only has this these yellow clips with these prongs i mean with these uh what's it called connectors and on the other side you have exposed metal and the one the side of exposed metal seems like it's going in in this part sorry i can't think of a name for it but it goes in this part and it's supposed to screw down and clamp along every single time. But anyway, the it's supposed to go between the screw and the prong. And then it screws in and then as you screw in the screw, it tightens and it keeps that wire in place. Whereas the other side, this side is meant to interface with the various connections that come up through here. For example, you can see like the black connects right here or the red connects here and the purple connects to the capacitor all right so let's do that okay so we're just going to try to do this raw just give it a go we don't want to plug this all the way we want to go right above you see this red rubber insulation um just before the prong so we're going to stop it right there we're going to insert this and you can see that we basically want this metal to contact with the flat side of the prong so insert it let it hang loose a bit and as for the orientation of the wire it looks like this way would be a bit hard to screw in the screw so we'll go for this angle instead so we're going to insert that or actually i'm going to insert this first make sure it's lined up then insert this you can see it's a bit of a tight fit Maybe I can twist this back a bit. You can see the screws interfering a bit. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, now it goes on. So now I'm going to space it properly away from the insulators. I mean, not on the insulators, but just right up to it. Screw it in by hand first. And then I'm going to try using my screwdriver. So, you know, what I'm, what I'm thinking as I'm doing this is the... I can see that the... The wire the connector it, it seems like it could go it could go further but i mean it's already making contact right now i can tell but i'm just worried that it's not all the way all right, so right now you can already see it's, it's it's somewhat tight i can still wiggle it a bit but if i tighten the screw more maybe not all the way because i still need to get the other ones in 
this is completely solid. So I'm not going to tighten that all the way because I still might need to adjust. I need to give some leeway for the other two prongs. So we're going to try that. Black is on the top left, red's on the bottom left, and purple's on the right. Instead we have a blue wire, so we're going to use blue for purple. So let's try it. Should give us a bit of leeway. And it looks like I'm stopping right about here, which is about where the other one stopped. Okay, so let's loosen this a bit. Insert it so that the wire is easy to manage. And then put it on. Okay. Just push in that wire as much as possible, just to ensure that's tight. Take our screwdriver and screw it in. Okay. I can see this one's a bit loose. So, keep tightening it. There we go. So now you can see that when I wiggle this wire, that end still seems to be secure within its port. So now we're going to go for the last one. And like I said before, if you don't want to use Phillips screwdrivers, then you can use uh, Phillips screw then you can use an allen head screw. That might be more relevant if you have like a really small area. But I feel like Phillips has to, has to be the way every single time. I'm not sure what the argument would be for having an allen one. But if you know, then comment in the comment section down below. Okay. All right, I'm going to push it in a bit, but then I'm going to readjust this wire to make sure that's where I want it to be. And okay, so one thing I'm, I'm noticing is that as I'm screwing this in, the actual terminal, I mean the, uh, the clamp itself is kind of wiggly. But as I continue to tighten the screw, that part gets a bit less wiggly. And let me test on all three of them. Can I move them by hand? And so it looks like they're all secure. What I'm gonna do now is because I didn't originally tighten them all the way so that I could give leeway to the other two, I'm gonna go back and tighten it as much as I can. Okay, not too tight because you don't wanna strip the screws and make your life a hell of a lot harder. But just enough to keep it secure. Oh, you see this? Very interesting. One doesn't look nice. Uh, let's turn it a bit. And there we go. All right. Let's try pulling it out. This one out. The reason that we're doing this, we're, tr we're trying to test, basically the compressor is going to start shaking. We don't want the shaking of the compressor to cause the wires to um, fall out, you know, to kind of like jiggle out of where they are. So, we're just trying to test that these are secure. And once we've done that, we're good to go. All right, so now it's just a matter of wire management, redirecting these back to where their original wire is connected. So we'll do that one at a time, starting with the black one. We're going to disconnect it right here. Let me just double check that. Yeah, this is a pretty thick wire that goes here. So I'm going to pry that out. So this is the old wire. I'm gonna take it out. <laughs> Look how thick this is compared to the original one. I mean, to the, compared to the ones that we got off of Amazon. I think that's why the ones that we got off of Amazon didn't work before. Okay. So let's loop that back where it was before. Up through this. And this one doesn't have a right angle connection. But hopefully, is it able to... Yeah, it should be still able to go on. 
unfortunately you might not be able to see me actually put it on because I might block you. Okay, and it's on. It even sounded like it clicked in place. Um, let's try wiggling it to make sure that it's fully on there. Okay. Next we're going to move on to the red one. The red one connects right here. Also, I forgot to mention, uh, other safety precaution, use a voltage pen to test for it's live. We already did that before, but I just remembered that I didn't mention it last time. But we're going to take that out. Okay. Here's our old wire. You can see we had to change the color because we didn't have any red wires at our disposal. This one's gonna go to red wire. And let's go up to this. I don't think the orientation of the uh, prong matters because it's the same, same kind of shape. Huh. Interesting. Okay, there we go. So now it's locked in place. Can't pull it out easily. Okay. And lastly, we're gonna do the purple one connected to the capacitor. Okay, so let's take these leads out. This one I do have to use pliers for because... All right. So let's take that out. Here's what it looks like. And then we're going to loop this blue wire. <laughs> I guess we'll have to change the snow here. It's not purple anymore, it's blue. Through this hole. And turn around and we want to go on the hermetic side. Or the hermetic prongs. And let's insert it. If we try to wiggle it out and I hold down the capacitor while I try to do that it seems pretty solid obviously the capacitor doesn't shake so there isn't much risk of it getting dislodged at this point we have all of them connected properly so now we're going to take a zip tie and just do a bit of wire management here you can't really go wrong just get everything nice and tidy Just for good measure, as a way to finish off our job, I want to uh, snip it off. Okay. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to test if everything is connected properly by turning it on. Before I turn it on, I just want to mention it, it is really interesting how this works. Although I am worried that you know, it doesn't look perfectly at a 60 degree angle. It doesn't look like that honeycomb shape that, you know, these have a honeycomb shape. I think the reason why these aren't perfectly at like 120 degree angles to each other is because our contacts are corroded. And so part of the spade is actually broken off, which allows this to have a bit of leeway. But hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm, I, no, not hopefully. I'm confident that tightening this enough um, locks it in place so that we don't have to worry about th that corrosion. But we'll see what the test tells us. So now we're going to put in the breaker. Last time we plugged this in, we saw some sparks. So you and my dad are going to watch for any sparks that come out. Okay, so the thermostat was on, but it wasn't, the temperature wasn't lowered. So let's try it again. Oh my God. My, my heart just skipped the beat for a second there. As you can see, the compressor is shaking. Good sign. There was no sparks too. And uh, it looks like our AC is running properly. So to talk about that spark again, they actually mentioned that kind of sparking uh, in the installation video of how to install the quick lug. They say, oh yeah, 
your your contacts can get corroded. Your contacts can get corroded if you have um, sparking or arcing occurring with your wires and your connections. And that's the reason that you would replace with the quick lug set. And so it's cool that they actually designed that with that situation in mind. They knew that this would happen to some people, and so they made this product as a solution to help those people figure um, solve it easily. Which I think is incredible because that's what engineers do. They have like tiny challenges like this, sometimes big challenges, but tiny challenges like this, and they make a product that solves that specific purpose and helps out people. And so learning from our lesson, my dad bought an extra capacitor so that when we would have to replace this in due time, maybe in five years, we have an extra one. It looks just like that one. The difference is it has these black uh, colors instead of those colors. But same markings. And while we and at some point in the future, we're also going to replace the contactor. And that contactor has been here, God, maybe 30 years? Like since 1996. So it's definitely a good time to replace it. Me and my dad were kind of hesitant about replacing it because, you know, it's a part that was made a while ago, back when they actually cared about quality. They don't make them like they used to. And so, you know what, what could happen is when we replace it with a new contactor, that new contactor could be have like planned obsolescence and it could fail within five years. If we didn't replace it, maybe it could have gone for another 10 years. But who knows? We're gonna replace it anyway and see what happens. And you know, I mentioned they don't make them like they used to. It's true. The AC system that we had, we've never had to service it in the 25 years that we've lived here. Except for when one time three years ago we had to replace a capacitor on the inside unit on the air handler. But aside from that, that's still 22 years of it working perfectly. And that's in New England weather. There's like, you know, tons of possibilities that could go on with the AC. But it's the test of time. And you can also see it is kind of dated because the actual thermometer is this... I, do we have a picture of it? It's, it's super old and the cover is exposed uh, with, with all the mercury inside. And so our next step is we're going to replace it with a new modern thermostat. Uh, and we'll probably end up doing a video on that as well. So go check that out if you're interested. But for now, I'm glad that our AC is still working perfectly. Usually the whole worry about like opening up the system is that in the process of trying to fix it, you're gonna break something else. As you can see, it's working perfectly. And so I'm Ayman and today I showed you how we installed our quick lug terminal repair set or terminal repair kit to help our AC run better and also to replace some old wires in it and also prevent arcing and sparking. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any thoughts, please provide them in the comment below. Uh, and help out other people who are considering buying this set. It seems like it works pretty perfectly for us. If you've had, if you've used it before, describe your uh, experience with it, and uh, that'll help other people to consider whether or not to use it. But anyway, I'm Ayman. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Look at, look at other videos on Ayman, Ayman, especially the videos on repairing our AC system, and also the video on installing the thermometer. And I'll see you there. I'm Ayman, and signing out.